Hello, in this video I'm going to be introducing specific heat capacity and demonstrating how you can use it to calculate the energy required to change the temperature of something. Specific heat capacity tells you how difficult it is to change the temperature of a substance. The full definition is the energy required to change the temperature of a unit mass, i.e. a kilogram of a substance, by unit temperature, which would be either degrees Celsius or Kelvin. Specific heat capacity is used in the equation Q equals mc delta T, where Q is the energy, the heat energy, m is the mass, c is the specific heat capacity, and delta T is the change in temperature. Now, sometimes you may see this equation in a slightly different form where E is used for energy and theta is used for temperature, but it's exactly the same equation, just different symbols for different uh, qualifications normally. This means we can rearrange the equation to get the specific heat capacity as C equals Q divided by M delta T. This means that the units of specific heat capacity are going to be joules per kilogram per Kelvin, or it's perfectly acceptable to have joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. Because we're dealing with a change in temperature, not an absolute temperature, and the size of one Kelvin is the same as the size of one degree Celsius, it actually doesn't matter whether we use Celsius or Kelvin in specific heat capacity calculations. For water, the specific heat capacity is around 4,200 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. This means that if you have one kilogram of water, it would require 4,200 joules to, its, to increase its temperature by one Kelvin, or it would require 8,400 joules to raise the kilogram of water by two Kelvin and so on. Here are some other specific heat capacities. Uh, lead has a specific heat capacity of just 130 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. And uh, vegetable oil has a specific heat capacity somewhere in between that of lead and water, which is about 1700 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. This means that lead is very easy to heat up. You need actually about 30 times less energy to raise the temperature of lead than you do to raise the temperature of the same amount of water. Let's do an example. Calculate the energy required to raise the temperature of five kilograms of aluminium from 20 degrees Celsius to 85 degrees Celsius. The specific heat capacity of aluminium is 880 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. So let's pull out some values here. We know that the mass here is five kilograms and that's already in SI units, but be careful sometimes a question might give you the mass in grams. We know that the delta T here is 85 minus 20, which gives us a change of temperature of 65 degrees Celsius. And we know that C for aluminium is 880 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. So now we can use the equation Q equals MC delta T. Substituting our values in, so 5 multiplied by 880 multiplied by 65 gives us an energy value of 2.86 times 10 to the power of 5 joules, which is also written as 286 kilojoules. Let's now try a more complex example. A small electrical heater is used to heat water. The heater has got a power rating of 30 watts and the water passes through the heater at a rate of 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms 
per second. The temperature of the water entering the heater is 20 degrees Celsius. Determine the temperature of the water leaving the heater. You may assume that all the energy of the heater is used to warm the water and it gives us the specific heat capacity of water here as 4,200 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. Now, in any problem that talks about a flow of mass, and this comes up in various topics, we should start by taking a snapshot of one second and simply consider everything that happens in that second. So, in one second, we can now write out the values as if they were happening in one second. So, we've been given a power in watts. Power is energy divided by time. Here we're talking about heat energy. So, it's heat energy Q divided by time, which means that in that second, the heat energy is going to be equal to the power, which is 30 watts, multiplied by the time, which is our snapshot of one second. So we can say that in one second, 30 joules of energy is being uh, transferred from the heater to the water. We also know that the mass flow rate is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms per second, which means in one second, that will simply be 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms. They also give us the temperature of the water coming into the heater as 20 degrees C. We will need to find the temperature that it leaves at. So we need to find delta T. What is the change in the temperature of the water? So let's begin by using our equation Q equals MC delta T and rearranging that to find delta T, the change in temperature, which will give us Q divided by MC. Q here is 30 and our mass 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 multiplied by the specific heat capacity which given in the question was 4200 joules gives us an answer for the delta T of 4.76 degrees Celsius or Kelvin. That means that the final temperature of the water must be equal to the initial temperature 20 plus the change in temperature 4.76 to give us an answer in three significant figures of 24.8 degrees Celsius. Thank you for watching this video from Cowan Physics. If you found it useful, please like, subscribe and visit cowanphysics.com.